Hey guys, Pocky here. This is part 2 of my Pokemon Players Cup Qualifiers battles, so if you haven't checked out part 1, please do, I'll put a link in the description below. I am not going to lie to you, when I saw this team, I looked at the Porygon 2 instantly and was like, nope, I don't want to have to deal with that, but he's probably going to bring it. He's probably going to Dynamax it as well, so that's going to be what I pick my team around. So setting up a Rilla and Melodic to start off with, to lead, I thought was pretty good. Incineroar, hang out in the back and do some debuffing and bring a Togekiss just in case. <laughs> This music is really intense as well. Yep, I was gonna say perfect for a Porygon 2 and a Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan, I wasn't expecting him to bring at all, so this will be really interesting. He's probably gonna be supporting the Porygon, but Porygon is definitely going to be the main Pokemon, I, I believe. So if that's the case, I'm gonna have to try to debuff him as soon as possible here. So I've played my fair share of Porygon games to know now that you can't leave a buffed Porygon as he is. So my best bet here, and because I did bring an Incineroar, is to switch out the switch out something for the Incineroar. At least debuff him just a little bit for now and just keep doing that. Especially if I believe he's going to Dynamax the Polygon, I better, I better get started now. Intimidate would also be really good against Hitmonchan as well, although I'm still not quite sure what the Hitmonchan is here for, but I better, I better do enough damage to him, keep him busy for now. Fake out's probably a good start. I thought they were going to Dynamax Porygon straight away, so I didn't, I didn't use Fake Out on him because it wouldn't have worked once he Dynamaxed. I thought Hitmonchan was probably a better option. We can use a priority move here to hit Hitmonchan, hopefully knock him out, but I'm not quite sure on the defense there whether it's going to be strong enough, but priority move would be great. And then I want to switch out Incineroar again. I'm going to be really annoying here, but I'm going to debuff Porygon and switch Incineroar back out. I'm being very, very cautious. I'm respecting that Porygon a lot here because I do not want to be, I do not want to be on the bad end of that. Also hoping a little bit of setting up here goes a long way. Not really sure what his other Pokemon's going to be because Hitmonchan was knocked out. So I'll just bring him a Melodic just for now. Melodic works well in the grassy terrain with um, grassy seed. So Porygon was going to use Trick Room. I didn't bring in my Tyranitar, unfortunately, but I've got Incineroar. Hopefully he'll be alright in the Trick Room. He's a bit slower. So we're about to see the third Pokemon. A Venusaur, that's not too good for Melodic, but Melodic is able to withstand quite a lot of hits. Hopefully won't get knocked out by one Solar Beam or one Grass type move. We'll have to see though, he might also go and G-Max the Venusaur instead of the Porygon, especially with how much I have debuffed him as well. But we're not quite sure yet. I think I will stall with Melodic. I will... I will Dynamax the Melodic to store here. Here we go. He's finally Dynamaxing something. It took a while. I was kind of worried he wouldn't do it. Let's see what happens. Yep, so he's gone for the Porygon, even after all the debuffs and things. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can survive his attacks. Even if they're like two or three shot attacks, rather than one shot, I'll be pretty happy. Melodic is my favorite Pokemon, so seeing it Dynamax is one of the most beautiful things. Look at that beautiful creature. 
absolutely beautiful. We did pretty good. The Max Lightning, even though it was super effective, barely did any damage to Melodic. So we can see this has kind of paid off a little bit. And Venusaur is now absorbing light, setting up for a solar beam. I'm not sure if this is going to finish the Venusaur off. Probably not. And that's okay. That's all right. I can only really set up Hail as a buffer because I didn't bring Tyranitar. So I'm going to, if I want to do any sort of extra damage, it's going to have to be the Hail. But depending on what move I have to do, I have to use, it may not last. I try to go for the Grassy Glide on the Venusaur to try to just finish his health off, although I don't think it's going to be very, very strong at all. But as I know that Venusaur is using Solar Beam at the moment, I'm going to be extra cautious and just max guard it to protect myself against the Solar Beam. Because I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain he's aiming at Melodic and I should be able to block that. However, I did leave Rilla Boom out in the open. That was a super effective move, but because it debuffed Porygon quite a bit, it didn't knock out Rilla Boom. So I'm really, I'm really proud of that. I'm, I'm happy with the work we've done there. We've still got a long way to go though in chunking down Porygon's health. He's going to take quite a while to, to knock out. Really just stalling right now until he's going back to his normal form. So here I wanted to just chunk down Porygon's health a bit more. Um, the one thing I didn't think about was that I thought Venusaur was going to faint from the hail, but I kind of forgot to play around setting, like keeping the weather as ice. So this is unfortunate here. It's unfortunate as well that Really Boom didn't get a chance to attack. That didn't do as much damage as I really would have liked it. And if and really it was a bit of a misplay because now Venusaur is not going to be knocked out by their hail straight away because it's it's raining now, not hailing. So I'm gonna switch in Incineroar again, go for my like, I don't know, millionth debuff on the Paragon. But also, if I play my cards right here, so Porygon's gone back to normal form now, he's no longer Dynamax, so we've stalled out pretty well, like Melodic is still alive, pretty low on health, but still alive. So Cinderor comes out and we can fake out on the Venusaur just to get rid of him, he won't have a chance to do any attacks. So the good news is, luckily I am able to correct my misplay from last round with the fake out. So Venusaur basically doesn't get a chance to attack. And now we're left with Porygon and one other Pokemon. Even though my Melodic did end up fainting in this battle, it took a long time for Porygon to actually make that happen. It would have been a lot faster if I didn't have Incineroar in this battle at all. Melodic probably would have, would have been knocked out way earlier. So now I've got Togekiss left to stall and we've got, they've got Cinderace. At least we know they can't G-Max the Cinderace, which would be really good. But it's not so much of a great type matchup for Incineroar, unless Cinderace has Libero and changes the type it is. Best case scenario is if Cinderace uses a Steel type move to try to hit Togekiss and becomes a Steel type and then Incineroar does the fire damage. But instead he uses a fire type move and I wasn't expecting that. My Cinderace doesn't have a fire type move, so I wasn't expecting that at all. However, it's not so bad. It just means that Incineroar here just doesn't, it just doesn't do that much damage to Cinderace particularly. Ice Beam is super effective on Togekiss, except again, 
it didn't have that much attack power so that's really good Tokus is able to survive and we're gonna need him to finish off everybody by the looks of it since Incineroar doesn't look like he's gonna be doing much damage he's gonna be Togekiss's support which will be an interesting dynamic so we're just gonna have to be aggressive with Togekiss here we really want him to be the sweeper we're relying on him to be the sweeper otherwise we're in a pretty good position very very excellent position <laughs> Porygon is finally down. Couldn't be any more happier than that. Incineroar is just going to have to do his best to finish off Cinderace here, which he does. Which he does very well. I'm pretty happy I didn't lose all my Pokemon. <laughs> At least not to the Porygon too. So I have my revenge now on all the other times. Looking at the opponent's team for this battle, I had a very strong feeling when I look at the Politoed that they're going to run a rain team. So that would mean Politoed would use Drizzle and Kingdra would be, the per would be probably the Pokemon to Dynamax if that was the situation. Otherwise, it would be Cinderace or Rilla. If they run a Politoed, I would want to go with a Rillaboom um, because it would be very uncontested in the rain, in the rain comp. I would want Tyranitar uh, leading with the Rillaboom for once, just to change the weather, change the drizzle away, um, and run an Incineroar to debuff Togekiss against, I guess, the dragons, especially if it's a Kingdra. had a few games as well against other rain comps where I would go in G-Max Rillaboom but for whatever reason, especially against the Kingdra or a Lapras, he just would not be strong enough. He just would not have the power even with the grass type advantage. So I think this time we won't G-Max him but we'll see. So they did bring the Politoed for sure and a Magnezone. I wasn't expecting the Magnezone but definitely was expecting the Politoed with a Drizzle. So we're going to basically neg negate this right up. So no rain, we want it to be a sandstorm instead. Thank you. Feel a bit better after the drizzle's gone. I'm not sure if they were expecting that from me. I think for the first turn we want it... It's hard for me to make a decision but I think we... We want to just do some damage straight up. I think I want to keep Tyranitar alive. So I'll switch him out for now because I want him to be able to change the weather again if for whatever reason we need to. Incineroar may not have been the best choice if Politoed was going to target Tyranitar with a water type move, but I have enough faith that Incineroar won't faint in one turn from that. I didn't play around Magnezone's sturdy ability, which was a shame, which was a real shame because now he has immunity to Sandstorm, so he's not going to get knocked out by the Sandstorm at all. He did use a Steel-type move on Incineral though, so I played around that okay, um, and Skull did a lot of damage, but at the end of the day, I think it was still better than Tyranitar because Tyranitar would have been hit by both of those moves, which would have been super effective. Um, and I think he's a bit more valuable at the very moment to keep alive. So I think switching Incineroar was the right play for me here. You hate to see Magnezone gaining health after having only 1 HP in the grassy terrain. You hate to see it. We want to get rid of the Politoed now, just in case. <laughs> but also, Magnezone is pretty low, so I'm going to try to use a priority move to get rid of him. And Incineroar can just do some damage. Some can fake out so Polito can't do anything silly. I didn't know Magnezo would have Ali Switch, I didn't play around it at all. However, Grassy Glide onto the Polito was still was still a really really good was still a really good move here. So we got rid of him. We're 4-3 now. 
can't complain here. Still would like to get rid of the Magnus Zone as quickly as possible though. He's a, I'm worried he's going to be a bit of a troublemaker. Plus, he's still just sitting here gaining free health. <laughs> free health that I'm giving him. We still haven't come across the Pokemon that he might Dynamax yet. I'm not fully convinced it's Dragapult. I'm not fully convinced because he had a Politoed that had Drizzle. So I'm, I'm expecting the fourth Pokemon to be the potential Pokemon he's going to Dynamax. And it's probably going to be Kingdra, his other water Pokemon. Otherwise it wouldn't make sense for him to set it up the way he did. I, I don't know if I should keep Incineroar in play here, but I think... He has a type advantage over Dragapult, um, as he is a dark type over the ghost. But again, I didn't play around Magnezone using Alley Switch, so I wasn't expecting him to do that. Not two turns in a row anyway. That's fine though, I think we get rid of Magnezone here. He can't Alley Switch no more, he can't get free HP anymore. And now we deal with Dragapult and potentially what may be a Kingdra. Here we go. Here's the Kingdra. Here's the star of his team. Here he is. Out of Dragapult and Kingdra, he is most likely going to Dynamax the Kingdra. I'm pretty, pretty certain of it. We should still get rid of the Dragapult though. Um, and if he is going to Dynamax the Kingdra, we should try to Parting Shot and debuff him a little bit. Dynamax Kingdra's kind of scare me a little. So doing a check here right now, we've still got Tyrannosaurus alive at the back, we've still got Togekiss. So if we lose Incineroar or Rilla, I was hoping not to lose the Rilla in the same turn, but they must have really thought he was going to be the Pokemon I was going to G-Max, especially with the type advantages. But that's absolutely fine for me. I've still got Togekiss, which is really good. Incineroar can still use a parting shot though, which will help hopefully quite a bit. So like I said, I've got Tyranitar and Turkey Kiss. And once I selected Turkey Kiss, I realized there was a little bit of a misplay again here because he didn't have to take that extra damage from the um, he didn't have to take the damage from the sandstorm at all. Tyranitar could have come out instead of Turkey Kiss in this turn and not taking that little bit of chip damage as he would have had immunity. So that was a little bit of a misplay again on my part here. Hopefully though, it's not gonna cost me the game. Now we just wanna sweep. <laughs> He's got his last two Pokemon. We've got our last two Pokemon. We just wanna sweep. And I haven't Dynamax anything. So Togekiss, here we go. He's going to be the best Pokemon to Dynamax out of these two because even though I don't have the type advantage over grass any over water anymore with grass, I've got immunity to dragon type moves. So that's gonna be super strong. I actually love the sound Togekiss makes when he dynamaxes as well. It sounds so cute. And he looks so happy. He looks so happy to be that big. In this situation, Togekiss will be the wind condition, Tyranitar will be the stall. But that doesn't mean that he still can't do a fair amount of damage with his rock slides. He just needs to survive. I'm not sure if they're going to focus him too much. Togekiss probably is a bit more of a threat. He's definitely exerting more pressure. And he can definitely take them down 
pretty much one by one. Fortunately, that wasn't strong enough to KO him in one turn. But Tyranitar should be able to clean up. Should be able to clean up pretty well here. These two make a really good team. Sandstorm is gone, that's okay. I'm really glad that Togekiss is a super tanky Pokemon. Um, and Tyranitar wasn't focused early enough, so the difference here is that switching him out from turn one and having Cinderaw out before he was, I think really helped a lot here as well. Tyranitar is just able to do a sweeping move, whereas Incineroar wouldn't have been able to, although he would have had advantage over Dragapult. Either way, it was a really good game, and I think I played around the rain team really effectively. So I'm pretty happy with that.